Boris Johnson goes against the second lockdown, but instead he comes up with an even more complicated measure. Hello everyone and welcome to today's show. Uh, so there's a lot happening with the government and all the mess during the, uh, the, the, the process of coming up with lockdown measures around the country. Uh, we've discovered that Boris Johnson is now going against the advice from SAGE, the independent body that's advising uh, our politicians and our government to do lockdown. Um, but also before we start, we have two days left to the potential no deal Brexit. In the second video after this, we're gonna give you an update on what's going on with no deal Brexit and everything around that. But let's start with Boris Johnson. Yes, as you know, Boris Johnson has been advised by people like Chris Whitty, Patrick Valens, and the, the, all the others as part of SAGE. And uh, these people have been coming up with various advice and then that some of them have been controversial, some of them have been ignored. Uh, what we've discovered is that Boris Johnson was advised recently by SAGE uh, to go with not just a second national lockdown, but very extreme measures, and he's actually said no to it. Now, before you get excited, this is not completely good news because instead the cabinets are coming up with all these semi measures uh, to avoid a second lockdown because Boris knows that firstly the country doesn't have money uh, to uh, manage a second lockdown, a full lockdown. Uh, secondly, he knows that the appetite is not completely there. Opinion polls show that you know, 60, 70% of people are in favor of strong measures, but the same opinion polls also show that a big chunk of those people will still kick off if there's a full second lockdown and if they lose their jobs. So for those who don't know, this is a list of people who usually attend uh, SAGE, the scientific experts, people like Patrick Balance, Chris Whitty, uh, Jonathan Van Tam, Jenny Harris, and all the others. And obviously there are also observers who attended and obviously secretarial uh, staff and this is the whole point of the, the massive group of people who have to come up with all these measures and they all have various views at the same time. They managed to come up with things that no other country is doing. So three weeks ago, this is what they came up with and Boris Johnson luckily has actually rejected. A, they wanted to have a short period of a second lockdown, uh, which would have been either two or three weeks. Uh, this is a similar lockdown that we had at the beginning back in March and April, uh, but uh, all the scientific experts around the world are saying this is pointless. Two, three weeks is not enough. And also lockdown is not a good idea. And they've also said advice to work from home. They've also said banning all contact within the home with members of other households uh, and closure of all bars, restaurants, cafes, indoor gyms, and anything else basically in that category and obviously university and college teaching should be online. Now, Boris Johnson luckily has rejected that, but he's adopted some of them and in a very, very complicated way, depending on the, with all the different areas around the country, it's not really helping because it's come up with this three tier or traffic light measure. It's, it's interesting because what this is actually doing is they're not closing or in certain areas, that is kind of extreme from their perspective. They're not even closing restaurants, that's good. And uh, schools, universities are still going on. Um, instead, they're basically locking people in on their campuses. It's slightly complicated. Now you think at this time you need to have a strong opposition to actually uh, oppose these views or actually come up with better alternatives. No, that's not happening because the Labour Party are agreeing with everything that the government does. And then when it doesn't work out, they blame them. But first, we have the Shadow Health Secretary, Jonathan Ashworth, who's saying that if closing the pubs keeps children in schools and the NHS going, then I would support that in parts of the country. But then adds that the government has got to step in to pay people's wages. Well, if closing pubs will keep children in schools, it's apples and oranges. It doesn't have to be black and white. You don't have to have these measures like this. Well, yeah, so let's just close the pubs, but schools are fine. Or close the school, but pubs are fine. It makes no sense because we know now that um, all top scientists around the world, even the World Health Organization, have now come out against using a full lockdown as a primary solution. Lockdown should not be used as the principal means of managing this virus. I wasn't saying you never use a lockdown, but goodness me, we should be very sparing in locking down because of the bad consequences of lockdowns. And the other thing that we say all the time, I know we might be in a rush, is during the time of a lockdown, do everything possible to prepare all these things that ma matter so much. Firstly, 
the testing, tracing and isolating. And secondly, the capacity of local level actors to work together to deal with spikes of disease very quickly, very quietly, very coolly, because that's the secret to the future is doing it local and getting all the different actors in. Now, this goes back to the idea that the hospitality sector is to be blamed for all this. But that's not what the data is showing because we have various towns and cities and areas that uh, are bringing out the uh, data. And we have one set of uh, stats from uh, Stockport that's actually showing it's not true. Yeah, so you're looking at the actual, especially on the right side, the total percentage, um, household uh, mixing is actually 77% almost. Uh, when you look at the eating out, exercise, shopping and events, it's only 2.4%. I mean, we could even question how they're getting all this data from. But at the same time, you can see that the hospitality sector, generally speaking, is not responsible for the new cases. But at the same time, all their policies, all these measures are affecting the hospitality sector because it seems like luxury, all these pubs and restaurants. At the same time, these are still businesses. People have jobs. They have to go to these restaurants to work. People also need uh, to have these things to go to uh, because of uh, we've seen a massive increase in mental health cases uh, because it's, this is not just about public health in terms of physical health but also mental health. Now let's talk about the, the graph that about a month ago or so uh, the government and Sir Patrick Valance came out with that said it's not a prediction but it's a prediction graph and the cases are going to go up unless we intervene massively unless we do a second lockdown. Well how are the numbers looking there? Well, you can see that we've been showing this on a regular basis. The red bars are what the projection was showing, then how it, it could double every day and every week. The blue section is the actual numbers of new cases. That's uh, it's actually been going down slightly, kind of slightly. There, we've had the peak already. Again, it could go up, it could go down, but the reality is it's not going up as it was predicted. Now, this is the job of our MPs, especially backbenchers, to scrutinize the government. And it's the job of the politicians in general, the political class, to do this. At the time, when people are losing their jobs, at the time, when the public sector are feeling the pressure, IPSA, the independent body, which is responsible for the, the salaries of our politicians, have come up with a pay rise for the MPs. Yeah, so IPSA is now set to authorize a 4.1% increase in MP salaries. So the salaries uh, will be up about uh, about 3,360 pounds from 81,932 pounds. It's gonna be basically over 85K, which means a newly elected MP, a couple of years out of university with no experience, immediately will be in the top 2% of earners in this country. This is not a paid off scale. I mean, before we get into the details of this, because there are alternatives uh, that you know people have come up with, including the Taxpayers Alliance, that this should be based on performance. Uh, and this is what they've actually said. They said the performance related pay for politicians demand reform for MP pay rises. They said that in the real world, workers get performance related pay. MPs should too. MPs are supposed to improve our lives by raising the standard of living for all. A measure of that is GDP per capita. Pegging MPs pay to GDP per capita would link their prosperity to the prosperity of all voters not just the judges and generals that MPs want to be on a par with. Uh, the representatives of the people should prosper with the people. If we get richer as a whole, their pay goes up. If we get poorer, their pay goes down. Yes, this is a solution that the Taxpayers Alliance and others have come up with and they're trying to lobby IPSA, the independent body, to uh, meet with them to actually discuss this because it's a good idea. When you have, again, ordinary people, uh, losing their livelihood. Even the public sector, the front line, you know, teachers and nurses and others uh, also feeling the pressure. Why is it that the MPs should just get a pay rise without actually even deserving it? Yes, I know a lot of them work, work hard, but it's not about just the effort. It should be about performance and it should be about outcome and result. Oh yeah, so we know now that obviously even the WHO, World Health Organization and other top experts, now that they've seen the, the result of full lockdowns, they're against it. Boris Johnson's rhetoric is now saying that I'm also against it, but it's come up with a complicated measure. This is the latest update we have for you guys. As usual, we'll keep you guys posted because the mainstream media I don't know what they're doing exactly, but second video after this at 8 p.m. We'll give you the latest updates on the Brexit talks because we have two days left till we get to the potential no deal Brexit. 
that Boris Johnson has promised to trigger unless the European Union back down and accept our trade offer. So make sure to tune in then. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to click like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel, become a member. You can find all the details um, in the description box. And also, don't forget to get our merchandise. We are the media, I'm MyTC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.